This is Ham Leader III from Spiritual Combatants, where we're training soldiers for Christ. I want to thank you for joining me for another Bible study boot camp message. This is episode number 15 and lesson 10 in the book, Living for the Kingdom. I'm currently in Colorado, so I don't have my books with me, but Living for the Kingdom is a book that establishes or has 115 lessons based on the commands of Jesus, and this is in fulfillment of his great commission in Matthew 28, 18 to 20. And so this Bible study series is geared to teach you how to study the Bible. And so as we're studying the Bible, we're using the most important lessons that I believe for disciples, which are the commands of Jesus to help us fulfill the Great Commission. So in this lesson, we're going to be talking about light in lesson 10, and it's going to cover Matthew 5, 14 to 16. Let me read it. It says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So in question number one, it says, look up light in Strong's Concordance. And so when I looked up light, it says to shine or make manifest, especially by rays. And it says luminousness, get that right? And then it's like in the widest application, natural or abstract, like abstract or, or artificial. It was like natural or artificial and then abstract or concrete or literal. It's like a fire or a light. So then in question number two, it says explain the examples Jesus illustrates in Matthew 5, Matthew 5 14 to 16. And number one, like a city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. I mean, I mean, even here in I'm in in Colorado, and you see these beautiful mountains. I mean, everything that's on mountains, you see the trees. If they if they have a building that's kind of set next to them, you can see it very clearly. I mean, it's very wide open, and it's, it's there's no hiding that city that's on a hill. You cannot hide it. And then, in a in a, in a second thing example, he provides is like a candle um, that is lit is not placed on a bushel. It's placed on a candlestick to give light to all in the house. So now, what this is giving, like the candlestick, is used for a purpose. It's not used that so you're going to light it and put it under a bushel, but or something that covers it up because it's made to give light. Its purpose is to illuminate and to show something, you know, to bring something to, to light or to, to present, to see what's around you. And so now that's like a gear toward what your purpose may be. And so why should you shine your light in question number three? It says, why should you shine your light before men? And there are several scriptures here and I'll read those and kind of give a little commentary. The first one is for the glory of God. In 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. And so this is why we're created. We're created to give glory to God, to bring him glory. And so now to honor and praise and adoration. So no matter what we're doing, then whether we're eating, whether we're drinking, whatever we do. So that means that when I'm shining my light as a person, maybe as a person, when people see me, I can't hide from a person when they see me. And then if I, my purpose is to be used, you know, as the candlestick is used to give light. As disciples of Jesus, we're used to share the gospel. We are used to present our lives to others to see so that they see Christ in us and that we begin to share Christ through our good works. We begin to work good works. They'll see the good works and they'll glorify our Father, which is in heaven. And so now what we're doing here is that whether we're eating, we're drinking, whatever we do. So now that comes in intention and purpose. And that means like every relationship that we have, the people we, we communicate with, even while we're driving, where we're working, everything that we do, then we're doing it to bring glory to God. And that really, I mean, even in the smallest of things, he says, everything, whatsoever you do, do it to the glory of God. So now our intention, that, that really shapes our focus. So when we begin to engage people, we're engaging them in a way that will bring glory to God ultimately. And so that's the first thing. The second one is to be blameless and harmless sons of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. And so in Philippians 2 and 14 to 16, it says, do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. 
And this is Paul speaking. And so now when you consider this, so we do all things without murmuring and without, without disputing. So we have something that, that's on our heart that's troubling us. We go before God to, for that. We don't do that in, in murmuring and disputing because then we're not really, we're seeking after our own way and it's not bringing any type of resolution and it's not bringing peace. So then we're not being peacemakers. We're beginning to split people apart instead. So now, so that we can be blameless and harmless. So we do those things without, you know, we, we don't murmur and we don't dispute because we can, so that way we can be blameless and harmless, be sons of God without rebuke. So we're sons of God being seen within the family of God, being identified as a son of God in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation as whom you shine as lights in the world. So where there is darkness, total darkness, now as you are present, now you bring light to the world. You bring Christ to the world. You give them hope and you allow them to see something other than darkness. And so that's why we need to do it. So we cannot be like the world and match what they may be doing. We have to act in a manner that's in alignment with the things of God. That way, as we're holding forth that word of life, you know, Paul wanted to rejoice as he was as he was ministering to the to the uh, church in Philippi. You know, he wanted to rejoice in the day of Christ to know that he hadn't hadn't labored in vain, that he was investing in these men and women, that they would serve the Lord and that they would be they would be blameless and harmless. That they would be uh, sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a perverse na nation. May we be able to do the same as we're holding on to the word of life as well. As we're in the midst of a perverse and crooked generation now, then we can continue to shine our lights as well. That we don't engage our, our conduct and behavior like others that may be in the world. Because then th there's, no, there's no difference or no way to identify or distinguish us from anyone else when we begin to act as they do. So now we need to be lights in the world and not engage in some of the same behavior and conduct that those in the world do because we want to be identified as being one in Christ. All right. So now the last one is to use the ability God has given you. And so this is in why should we shine our light before the world? And so now in 1 Peter, 1 Peter 4, 10 and 11, it says, As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as stewards, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do so as of the ability which God gives, giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be the praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So now, as a light in the world, you you may not be a candlestick, but the candlestick was used for a purpose, to give light to rooms or illuminate certain areas. So now, as you are a light in the world, you're used for a specific purpose. God gives you certain gifts. He gives you a specific mission uh, uh, to work in his harvest. And so now, while you do that, go out there and to be used. If you if, if, if a man speak, let him speak as an oracle is God. Anything that you've been given, whatever gift you receive, even so minister that gift one to another as good stewards, that I'm taking responsibility. It's like when you have a, uh, a house or a car or you have clothes or something and, and you want to take care of them and you make sure that and you just don't throw them anywhere and you, you fold them up nicely. You iron them. You make sure they look very nice. You make sure they're kept well so that they last a long time. The same thing, that whatever gift I have, I'm going to I'm going to just take a great interest to make sure that it's protected, it's, it's, it's grows, you know, that I'm, I'm feeding into, I'm, you know, I'm growing it, I'm helping it to develop. I'm seeking the Lord to help whatever needs to be cultivated to ensure the gift can be used. And then I go out to be able to use the gift as God meant it for it to be, to be used. I, I will allow him to use me as he so fits, see fit, so that I may bring glory to him, so that I begin to illuminate the gospel of Jesus Christ, the light in the midst of darkness, in the midst of darkness, so that others may see him and they will come to him as well. And that's why we are created. We are created to bring glory to God and through our good works that he may be glorified. So in this lesson, this is a little bit of a short lesson, but it's important for us to think about our light in the world. And I really want to take some uh, a time uh, to think about in, say, in 1 Corinthians 10 and 31, that whether we eat or drink or whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. And I pray that as you consider being a light in the world and what your purpose may be, that you will really consider, now, how, am I giving light? Am I being illuminating the glory of God while I'm eating? Am I glorifying God in the midst of my drinking? Am I glorifying God when I'm at work? Am I glorifying God when I'm at the store buying groceries? Am I glorifying God when I'm walking in the parking lot? You know, it is, is, my, is my actions, are my actions 
intentional about living in a manner that brings glory to him because that's why we are created. Regardless of the mission that he may give us or what he asks us to do whenever he asks us to do it, we're all meant to bring glory to him. And so I pray that God will bless you in this message. I pray that it will encourage you. I pray that it will stretch you. It will challenge you and it will help you to be a faithful disciple unto Jesus Christ that you may shine your light in the world in the midst of a perverse and crooked generation. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please hit me up on the messaging. You can shoot me an email. Please like this message, share it, follow with, follow us on uh, uh, on YouTube. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go back and review some of our previous videos that we have within this this series. And until the next time, may God bless you abundantly. God bless.